We are talking about the Mohr circle and I think at this point we should be rather proficient in how to construct it and how to work with it. But let's remember there has been a very important underlying assumption in everything that we've done and it was the assumption of a state of plane stress. Okay, So uh, essentially what we have assumed is that we have a um, certain choice of a coordinate system, let's say x and y, and there is here a out of plane direction, which is the z direction. And what we've said is that, well, in this case, we pick two points that go onto the Mohr circle, which is sigma x and minus tau xy. That was our x point. And then we picked a y point, which is sigma y plus tau xy. And we had said that sigma z is equal to zero along with tau zx and tau zy is equal to zero. That is what we call the state of plane stress. And that assumption is crucial as I will remind you shortly once again in the derivation of the equations that have to do with the principal stresses with respect to rotations within the xy plane or now you notice what rotations about the z-axis which is perpendicular to our page okay um, so those assumptions are crucial so everything we've done including the construction of the Mohr circle relies on these being zero but let's see if we can drop some of these assumptions okay so now the plane stress assumption is therefore saying that with respect to one axis every stress component z in this case Anything that involves z is zero, okay? and everything else is non-zero, and you pick those two points, put them on the Mohr circle, and eventually you can work with it. But now, it turns out, when I give you a problem many times, or in your book, you have to identify what these directions are. So the problem just gives you a, uh, say, cylindrical beam that's bent and torqued, etc. You have to solve this problem to determine principal normal and shear stresses, etc. And therefore, you have to assign some coordinate directions. The axis of a beam you can call x, um, or you can call something else. So, for instance, you can call the axis z. In that case, due to bending, you will get certainly normal stresses, for instance, um, associated with the z direction. Um, and you might get um, normal stresses along x direction. But perhaps, according to that choice, there is no normal stress associated with the y direction. And therefore, it's just actually the same problem. It's just that you're picking your direction, your default direction, say the axis of the cylinder with a different coordinate. You're associating it with a different coordinate. So it just happens to be that instead of sigma z is 0, sigma y is 0. And similarly, anything that has to do with y, in this case tau xy, tau yz, is also equal to zero and therefore you just have exactly the same problem it's just that it's a different set of coordinate directions and therefore it is still plain stress because stress is associated with one direction in this case y there is still zero but you want to use the more circle so in this case well how do you use the more circle what shall i put on my more circle map there is a normal and a shear stress associated with rotations in that plane but so obviously there is going to be a z point and there is going to be a x point okay here x and y x and y z and x z and x right um, now similarly you could have chosen your coordinate system to analyze your problem such that actually the horizontal direction is y the other direction is z and the third direction is x and in this case you would observe that for that problem it's always the same problem sigma x would be equal to zero and anything that has to do with x, tau xy is equal to tau xz is also equal to zero. This is also state of plane stress. Here, if you want to use the Mohr circle, you would have a y point and you would have an x point. So in these cases, the work, you, the way you work with them is that you keep the convention of a, a right-handed coordinate system, okay, or the right-hand rule in mind. So it's x, y, and z okay. so 
So x cross y gives you z, etc. Right? x cross y gives you z, z cross x gives you y, y cross z gives you x. Okay. So with that convention, what I've done is essentially you look at this picture. I've ordered them in that fashion in the correct right hand system. And therefore, what you can do is you can simply replace going to this picture x with z, y with x. We've already replaced z with y. Plain stress, not with respect to z, but with respect to y. Okay, so instead of x, I'm going to write z. So I have a z point. That means z goes with directly sigma z and minus the value of tau zx. Okay, so y is replaced with x in this case. So y is replaced with x is going to be a sigma y and plus the value of the shear stress. Okay, and here y replaces x, z replaces y. So I will have sigma y minus tau yz and sigma x plus tau yz. And now if you would like to ask the question, well, suppose I rotate um, a coordinate system to a different direction, say to z prime and x prime, okay, or to say y prime and z prime just like we asked the question well what's the rotation to x prime y prime it's always the same question it's just that by default you assign that not to be x but z doesn't really matter all the math remains the same the more circle remains the same as well and so everything we've done is valid it's just instead of x y you write z x or y x and ultimately there will be principal stresses, principal directions here, which are very important for us, as I indicated. So there will be a principal direction one and a principal direction two. And here I will indicate those principal directions, okay, by, because it's Z, I will indicate it with three and here with one, and that would be two and three respectively, okay? But it's just the same problem uh, it's just a different way to indicate the coordinate system. All right. Now, having said that, therefore, if I give you a plane stress problem, you can identify it as such. What is special about it? There is only at most one. There is at most one shear stress among the three possible that is non-zero. All the remaining two must be equal to zero. So if I give you a state of stress, there is at most one shear stress that is equal to, that is not equal to zero. Okay. Um, then that's a plane stress problem. And then you have to identify that problem accord that plane accordingly. If tau zx is non-zero, then it's plane stress within the zx plane or about y, etc. Okay? But now this is what we started with. And let that let let's make that our um, sort of default choice. And let me highlight that default choice like this. Okay. This is this is our default choice. That's what we've stuck with. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and try to generalize this picture a little bit. And I'm going to generalize that picture in the following manner. So first of all, uh, what we had was a state of stress. First of all, starting from our default picture, we had a state of stress. It was indicated like this. And we had a sigma x on it and a sigma y on it and a tau xy as well. Okay. And we asked ourselves, well, um, if I want to find another, a, a, another um, plane, if I go to another plane, and this could be the principal plane, it doesn't have to be, but it could be, okay? So if I go to another orientation, and now the difference of that orientation from the original one is that this one had orientation x, y, this one has orientation x prime, y prime. Okay, And what I'd like to do is I'd like to find the new values of the principal stresses, of the normal stresses, I'm sorry, it doesn't have to be the principal direction, Okay, and the shear stress. And so what do I do? Well, what we've done is we've taken a plane here, we've mapped it over here, 
And we've looked at the equilibrium of this thing, which is like this. And so there is here a normal stress, sigma prime x, let's say. There is here a shear stress, which is tau xy prime. And here I have along x sigma x, along y sigma y, and of course tau xy. And I do some of the forces along the x direction is zero. Um, then some of the forces along the y direction, likewise equal to zero. And I can determine x prime and y prime. Great. Well, now let me complicate this picture by hopefully not messing up the equation, the, the picture a lot. I'm going to throw in a third dimension, and that third dimension is going to be the z direction. I throw in a third dimension. That's the z direction. Okay. And I'm going to throw in that picture by also imposing a sigma z. But sigma z alone and absolutely no other shear stress on those planes. No tau zx and no tau, no tau zy. You could have done what I'm doing with any of the other pictures. I'm just sticking to the default picture. And now I try to do the same thing. Suppose I rotate about the z-axis or in the xy plane, right? So this axis is still the z-axis. So there is still a z direction is still right like this. Okay, so this direction is still the z direction, so there is still sigma z. Okay? Now, how do I know that there is still sigma z? Well, because when I try to find the values of x prime and y prime, um, um, and I want to determine their values, I look at equilibrium along x and y directions. So, the values of these things come from these two equations, right? And those two equations are looking at equilibrium of forces along x and y directions, x and y. If sigma z is there, then it is along a third direction, sigma z, right? So it's along a third direction. It makes absolutely no contribution to these force equilibrium force balances. And therefore, whatever result that I have deduced regarding the values of these for a given amount of rotation, theta, with respect within the xy plane or about the z-axis, right? Anything that I deduce, the way I formulate the Mohr circle, every, everything is still going to be valid uh, because sigma z is making no contribution to equilibrium of forces along x and y. Notice that if instead of sigma z or in, in addition to sigma z, I had imposed a tau zx, it's on the plane with normal z in the direction x. As soon as I put a shear stress along the x direction on the z plane at tau zx, then the sum of the forces along that direction will be influenced by it. And likewise, if I put a tau zy, this one will be influenced by it. As I make rotations, the values I get come from these equilibrium equations, and those equilibrium equations are, indicate, are influenced by the shear stresses. So the values I would get would be influenced also by those shear stresses. And everything I've done would go to uh, the trash bin because they are now, they should now be different, right? But that's not the case if there is only sigma z because it's in an absolutely other new, um, new direction, right? So, therefore, we conclude that if you generalize the state of plane stress by adding a normal stress only, then everything we've done is valid to a large extent. Now, some things we have to be careful about, but everything, it seems, is valid uh, so far. So that state of stress we call a generalized state of plane stress. Generalized plane stress. Which means that these are still zero, still, but this doesn't need to occur. And likewise, if you work with that picture, these are still required, but this doesn't need to hold. And likewise over here. Okay. So that is what a state of generalized plane stress is means and that is the implication okay as an implication of the way we derived the 
principal stress equations and we applied them or converted them to the Mohr circle, the principles we've used uh, indicate that everything is valid for the state of generalized plane stress as well. Notice that a state of plane stress is a state of generalized plane stress from the uh, outset. Okay, so plane stress is a state of generalized, let's say, plane stress is a state of plane stress with just that third possible direction equal to zero, but a state of plane stress is not a state of um, generalized plane stress. Um, well, or I think I said it the first time correctly. State of plane stress is a state of generalized plane stress. Uh, you just set sigma z to be zero. Okay, if, it's, if sigma z is zero, it's a state of plane stress, but a state of generalized plane stress is not a state of plane stress because um, for that to happen, you have to have the third stress, uh, the third value of the uh, stress equal to zero. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind. Generalized plane stress is not a plane stress state, but plane stress state is a special case of generalized plane stress with the third value of the stress being equal to zero. So now finally notice that, interestingly, we could go to a very special plane which is actually the plane that's associated with the state of principal directions. Okay, So I could have gone from this not to that direction but to a very special direction which is associated with the principal directions. Let's draw them like this. Okay, So that is the one direction, that's the two direction, this angle is theta and I calculate in exactly the same way and then there is uh, here a sigma 1, there it's a sigma 2 and nothing else because this is the uh, this is the principal directions, the principal normal directions and now there is a third dimension here that we are not drawing right? Okay. and that third direction has to do with the sigma z direction. Okay? Now what is the definition of a principal direction? It's a direction on which, it's a plane on which there is no shear stress. The third direction, the z direction, is already a plane on which there is no shear stress by the definition of a generalized plane stress state. And therefore it turns out that sigma z is already a principal state of stress it's a uniaxial sort of tension with respect to the third direction and therefore the third principal direction is actually equal to the z direction. Okay, So the principal di picture corresponding to the original picture that we have is this one. You rotate by an amount theta n about the three axis and you reach this picture where you have these two principal normal stresses that we calculate in exactly the same way as we did before and the third principal stress is equal to um, sigma z, whatever its value is, and the third principal direction is equal to the z direction.